DK and I'm back, back, back again with Van Talk episode seven, baby. The grand finale. This is the last one of season one. Huge shout out to everybody that put the questions in the comment section. I really appreciate all the love and support, but we ain't gonna waste no time. It's time for us to get out here and get on the ground. Let's get it. Question number one comes from at Rideshare Lisa, and she says, I do a lot of catering, but I heard that an LLC is important for tax reasons. Should I get an LLC for that reason? Um, this is my honest opinion. I think that, you know, I'm just gonna tell you the honest truth, Lisa. Look, first off, shout out to my guy, my, my girl, Rideshare Lisa. Make sure you guys subscribe to her YouTube channel. She'll be dropping out some information on there. Now, this whole LLC talk, I just wanna be honest, honest and tell the honest truth. The whole LLC talk is kind of overrated. Everybody has used these keywords like LLC and business. Like, uh, you know, they, they use different keywords to make themselves sound smart. This whole LLC thing, um, if you haven't, you've been doing this for a while from what I understand, and you haven't had an LLC yet. So you've been good, you've been doing what you've been doing, you ain't been having no problems with the government because you don't want no problems with the IRS. You don't want no problems. I don't want no problems, so nobody want no problems with the IRS. So once everybody starts changing over stuff, now you gotta have another bank account. You gotta add another bank account, a business bank account uh, to everything that you're doing. And some of the money gotta go in there. Then you gotta file two different separate taxes. You gotta file one for the business. You gotta file one for yourself. If you don't wanna go through all that, then not do it. Don't waste your time trying to please everybody because everybody gonna say everything. You gotta do this, you gotta, hey man, everybody know everything about everything when they need to know everything. Everybody know everything, but they're not growing and not earning enough money. But they know everything about everything. Look. Do what works best for you. If it doesn't work for you, don't do it. If you don't want to file multiple tax uh, taxes, don't do it. That's just my opinion. Everybody can think how they want to think. You can go get the LLC if you want to. This is just only my opinion, so that's all I'm going to give you. But shout out to you for the question. I appreciate all the love and support. Make sure you guys subscribe to your YouTube channel. Question number two comes from at Bob the Builder, and he says, have you done any long haul mortuary transports? No, actually, I haven't. Uh, let me just say this. Let me just say this, my guy, Bob. Bob, look. Bob the Builder. The long hauls are not for me. You have to really be built to drop all the miles and stuff like that. It ain't for me. I did it one time. I did it a couple times. But I, look. I, I, that's true. It's exhausting. I ain't even gonna lie. I want to say huge shout out to all the truck drivers, all the expediters, all the box trucks that do overroad and all that stuff. But it's not ready for me. Now. As far as uh, drop, like I, I'm guessing you're saying like drop off caskets to different places. I've never done that before, but it's definitely something I will, you know, be into if, if the money right. I don't want no bodies in there though. I just want it to be a regular old casket, the long, the box, and then I just drop that joint off. But I do not want to go too far. So if you do have any info about that, I definitely will be open to any suggestions that you have since you got all the knowledge about it. So email me at romeshousereviews at gmail.com and let me know so we can go out there uh, and go. Question number three comes from at Off Topic and he says, how do you go about calculating your dollar per hour ratio? Um, Honestly, me personally, I don't really calculate a dollar per hour ratio. I just don't think like that. I kind of think that thinking about a dollar per hour ratio, you kind of selling yourself short and you kind of almost think like an employee. So most employees, when they go to the interview, they say, uh, they say, how much am I make an hour? I'm gonna make $20 an hour. So that's, that's I, don't, I just don't think like that. I think that I'm trying to go out here and get as much money as possible. I might set, because this is another reason why I don't think like that, is because what happens if you don't make that money per hour? Like how, what do you do then? What do you do? Like, at what time do you quit and go in the house? What happens if you don't make that money per hour? And what ha happens if you make over that money per hour? So it's kind of like you can't really justify doing it that way because it's not a per hour type of thing. You just got to go out there and get as much money as possible. So that's another reason why I really don't think of, think of it that way. I don't mean to offend you by saying that whole employee mindset thing, but that's just how, that's how I look at it. I'm just telling you the honest to God truth. Um, what's the minimum amount you're willing to take for a load? It depends on what it is. So if it's a low, is it from the carry company or, if it's, or is it on the gig app? I'm taking anything that makes sense to me. Anything that makes sense, I'm taking it. So if it makes sense and I'm right here, even if it's $10, if it's $10 and it makes sense and I'm right here to go to CVS, get this prescription, drive two miles down the road, and I'm going that way anyway, why not get the $10? That's just how I look at it. See, if you're thinking about how much you're going to make per hour, you're not going to think like that. 
You gonna be like, I need to make this per hour. I look, I'm trying to get this money as fast as possible. That's just, my goal is this. My goal is to go out every morning and get the money as fast as I can get it and be home as early as possible. That's just how I look at everything. I think that time is the most important thing. So I try to get the money as fast as I can. And that's just how I look at it. But shoes out you is a great question. Do you have a minimum amount that you'll take for a load from a carrier? See, now with the care, I don't know. That's kind of hard to say. I don't really know. I know that I tried to, like in the beginning, I was trying to make it like they got to pay me more because I got this commercial insurance now and all this and all that. But if I'm right there and that joint uh, two miles pick up and drop off $50 or something, I mean, I'm gone. I'm gone for the empty. But see, that's the thing, though. It's kind of hard to say that because with the carrier company, it's way different than the gig apps. The gig apps like boom, boom. The carrier company is you might have to sit down and wait. You have to wait this long, make this long. So I would say I, I, ha I have bid it for like $100 before. I have bid it for a hundred dollars before. I think that's kind of like the minimum that I really would go. It's like a hundred dollars, um, and we've won and lost some for hundred dollars. I'm sure there's other people out there who go for less, for less amount of money. Um, and then last, do you change any of these um, dollar amounts, minimums, or anything like that on depending on if it's a slow day? I, let me. I'm gonna tell you the truth about the slow days. Now with the slow days, me personally, it's like. Some days it just it just ain't meant for you to be. It ain't meant to be. I'm just telling you right now. There's gonna be some days where you go out there, like man, it's just critical. Sometimes you gotta chalk these days up. And I know that you wanna feel like you. I, at least I made something. But you like you'll go home. You at the home chilling. You gonna get up, turn on your car, turn on whatever vehicle you got, drive all the way over here for thirty dollars. Like it don't make sense. And sometimes you just gotta let it be. Sometimes you just gotta let it be. I have had some zero dollar days. So sometimes you just gotta let it be, and wake up tomorrow and get back out there and get busy again. Don't get discouraged. Don't get go don't get discouraged. Get encouraged. Get encouraged to go out there and get that money. Question number four comes from at DMAC and he says, is it necessary to have a high roof van or will a savannah or an express work? I want to say this. It is not necessary to have a high roof van. It really depends on what you're trying to do and your goals and everything. Get what works for you. Get what you can afford. Get what works for you. Don't rush out there and try to get what everybody else get. Stay in your own lane and do your own thing. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. You can get it with a Savannah van, Express van, and then if you want to get a bigger high top van later, just work your way up that way. Don't rush out there and think you have to get this and get that. You don't got to do all that. Get what you can get and go out there and get a grip. Question number five comes from at Mike Finelli, and he says, why do most people not set a daily goal that will not only pay for their business, but also pay for themselves? Instead, they typically only set a goal that's enough to pay for the business and not enough to actually pay for themselves or vice versa. Mike, what's going on, Mike? I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm gonna tell you the truth, Mike. I'm just gonna tell everybody that's watching this video right now the real truth about the whole situation. Shout, first, I wanna say, I know you, shout out, you watching that, that Double M. You watching my guy Double M. That's my, that's his nickname. Don't let nobody, hey, I said it here first. You been watching my guy Double M. That's Mark the Mentor, Marky Mark Double M. I said it first. Let's make sure you say that. Now, I know you've been watching this content and I definitely agree with all the stuff that he's saying. But for the most part, in my opinion, people are not looking at this as a business. They not, they, it's not a business to them. This is a way for them to not work their job. So they figure if they got their job and they was making $20, $25, $30 an hour and they can go out here and make the same amount, then they'd rather do that than have a boss. That's the way people think nowadays. They don't think about, no, you know, Mark, he scaled up, he did all this. They don't, people don't think like that. They ain't thinking about no scaling. They may say they want to scale. They may say they're going to scale. Yeah, one day I'm going to have to. But in reality, they're not going to scale. They're going to do the same thing they've been doing. Their, their whole objective of doing all this is to not work a job. That's all they want to do. They don't want to care about getting 15 trucks and doing all they don't, they, they don't care about that. All they want to do is be able to provide for their family and make as much money as they can. That's the reason why when you watch the testimonials from my guy Double M, most people are... are Interchanging funds, co mingling the funds and moving it over here and spending it up. That's because they're not running like a business. And I do also want to say this that all of this takes time. If you plan on scaling later on, you might not look at it the same way you're going to look at it like right now versus when you look at it later on. Right now, you might be doing the money, moving it over here, doing this, doing that, doing that, doing that. But later on, you're going to, in order to scale, you're going to have to start paying your employees and all that stuff. So you're going to look at things way different than you just being one person doing it. So that's my honest opinion. Most people are not looking at this 
like a big uh, a business and they're going to scale. They're just not. That's just not how they're thinking. They're actually out here trying to get as much money as possible and provide for their family. That's it. That's all. They don't want to. I mean, they may want to. Their dreams may be to one day own all these trucks and all this, but they most for the most part, in my honest opinion, majority of people are not going to do that. They're just not. Question number six comes from at John Williams, and he says, my question is, are you ever going to do some lug or Instacart Costco batches so we can see you do something like that? Lug, you you been, hey, hey, John, that's John. Mm -hmm. John been asking me to do this lug for a long, long time. He always been asking me to do this lug and Instacart. What else he say? Lug, Instacart, what else? He said Costco batches from us. And Costco, look, John, I'm gonna tell you right now, John. John, we did plenty and plenty and plenty of Instacart batches. I'm talking about, we do, I got, we got Instacart uh, videos galore. We got plenty of Instacart orders uh, and videos. Um, As far as lug, lug has been reaching out to me, but I'm gonna tell you this about lug. Lug kind of be tweaking a little bit. I heard that the pay was okay, but they a lot of times they seem like they want you to move whole houses. But I did, we did one time we was picking up some uh, crate and barrel for our customer, and we saw these dudes doing a lug, and they was only taking like a dresser or something like that. But I do want to say this: lug wants you to go in the gym or go somewhere else and just put a hundred pounds like just right here, like this. Why do they want you to do it? That's, that was lug, right? Yeah. They want you to just go to the weight room. I ain't about to go to the weight room and do all this goof. Look. They want you to go to the railroad and put like 50 pounds, like 100 pounds like this, out like this. So show that you can carry. Now, I do understand that you know, that's that's a good measure for them to make sure that you can't lift this stuff. I get it. I actually understand it. But at the same time, who is about to do all that? I'm not about to be going in the weight room and do I'm not, man, look. And y'all ain't paying that good. What I look like? That's just how I look at it. But Instacart, as far as Instacart, uh, Costco batches, you never know. You never know. We might go out there uh, and go. You never know. You never know what may happen. Um, but I also want to say this, though. One more thing. I kind of feel like the way I look at things is I feel like I'll be going backwards. I don't know why. I just feel like I'll be going backwards because I already did that before. We already conquered that. We already did all that stuff. And now we move over to this side. And then it depends. If they do start having like bigger loads for sprinter vans, absolutely. We go out there, get busy, like we get a whole bunch of cases of water, whatever, and then pile up the van and then go do it like that. But um, if they had like an Excel program or something, we definitely do that and we definitely make the video for y'all so y'all go out there and ball. But other than that, I might or might not. I really don't see it in the future, but you never know what may happen. Question number seven comes from at DMAC and he said, did Uber and DoorDash contribute a lot to you saving up for your van? And do you think those are still good options for people to do now? Um, I would say as far as the van spark all the, all the way spark the, spark. Hey, when we was doing spark, we was getting busy. I'm gonna tell you right now. When we was doing Walmart spark, we was out there getting busy. I told you guys before we had the most we ever got was like five or six hundred dollars in one day, and it was probably like five hours of work. So spark was the main thing that got us the most money the fastest with Walmart spark. Um, as far as DoorDash and Uber Eats. Uh, they, 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 every look, every app played a part. I ain't gonna sit here and try to knock, uh, do over Easter DoorDash. Every app played a part, but all you gotta do with the money is be smart. You gotta be smart with the money. When you get the money, save the money, save the money, save the money, invest the money, invest the money, invest the money, and then you'll grow and then you'll go out there and get your van or whatever you need to get. What was the other question? Um, do you think that there's still good options for people to do now? Uber Eats and DoorDash, to be completely honest with you, I have no clue. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I haven't done it in so long. I don't know what the rates are like. I don't know if there's good orders out there. I don't know where the good spots to go to get the orders. I really don't know nothing about Uber Eats and DoorDash anymore, like at all. Um, I do know that it is just a couple of YouTubers that do still do DoorDash and stuff. So you may want to check out their channel. I know about Bentley Coop and, and Megan. Megan, well, I, 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 I sorry, sorry to cut off your question. I know Bentley Coop still do it. They say Pedro, and I don't know who else do it. I just know Bentley Coop, uh, no, his name is Bentley Coop is DoorDash Diaries. DoorDash Diaries and Pedro, I don't know his name on YouTube, but I know it's Pedro. Pedro. Um, also, I do want to say this right now. If y'all clip this up and send it to her, shoot, shout out to Megan. Megan is the first one I've seen with the, with, the, with the camera on the top of her head like this, walking around recording videos. Shout out to Megan, and I do want to say I'm proud of her because she didn't let everybody put her in the box. She did switch her channel up, she went from doing DoorDash and Uber Eats and stuff. Now she do gaming and different things like that. So I want to say huge shout out to her for not letting them put it in the box. I'm very proud that she did that because sometimes 
people, it made people think, people may think it's just all you can do. You can do whatever you want to do. It's your channel, do it however you want to do it. I spit the how fluid. So, huge shout out to you. I appreciate the question. On to the next one. Wait, 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 wait. We ain't going to the next question yet. I do want to say something that's very important about you asking about DoorDash and Uber Eats. This is my, this is my personal opinion, and this is what I'm going to tell you. This is going to help you out a lot. Do not rely on one or two apps. Get as many apps as possible. I literally have a video showing you guys 30 apps. Go watch the video and sign up for all the apps you can. Do not, do not, because you're limiting yourself. Do not limit yourself. If you want to make as much money as possible, you need to have as many apps as possible. Because what if DoorDash and Uber Eats ain't booming right now? What if Sparky is and what if Freight and all these other different apps are booming? So, sign up for as many apps as you can so you can go out there and get them bands. I hope you understand. Question number eight comes from at one, two, three little wax. And he says, how do you add your business name and EIN on the gig apps and not use your personal social security number? Um, some would allow you to, and honestly, a, a good amount of the apps will not let you do that. Most of them want you to put your actual name, your uh, social security number in there. I know that Curry, 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 Curry. I do know that Curry allow you to put an EIN. I really don't know about all the other ones. I know for sure Curry does, but a lot of the other ones don't allow you to do that. So I guess they want you to use your personal information. I'm not sure. My question to you is, answer in the comment. My question to you is, what makes you want to put it in your business name versus putting it in your regular name? The way I look at it is, whichever way I got to do it. Yes, I would prefer to put it in my business name, but if I can't do that, I can't do that. I'm not going to stop myself from making the money because I can't put it in my business name. I put it in my social security name and then, uh, social security number and do it that way. Whatever you got to do to go out there and get busy. Do what you got to do. Y'all know my flow sick like the flu. Question number nine comes from at Nick, and he says, I know you mentioned before that you don't trust other people and you find it hard to depend on other people helping you out with business. How would you be able to scale your business with just you and your partner? Nick, that is a great question. I already had the answer, Nick. I already been mapping everything out already. So this is my plan. If this ever happens, because I still don't know if I want to do this or not. The only way I'm going to scale is if I have enough work to scale. Sometimes people are going to go out and buy these vans, van, van, van. Now you got 17, 20 vans, and you ain't got no nobody to put them in the vans, and you don't have no work for the vans. First, I want to say this before I even get into that. Make sure you guys get the work first. Y'all trying to do, y'all trying to skip steps. Ain't no skip step. No, no, no step skipping. You need to get whatever vehicle you do. Get continuous work from whatever you're going to get it for continuously, continuously. And then once it becomes so overwhelming that you can't do it with one van no more, then you get another one. Then you get another one. Then that, that, that's how you do it. Don't just go out there buy one van. You do a few gig gaps. You make $500 one day. You make $200 one day, $500. And then you be like, man, look, I'm just going to go give me another van or go give me another car or whatever and give me another one. And then we're going to make more money. That's not how it works. Wait until the money is flowing in so good that you have to get another van. It's forcing you to do that. Now. Um, as far as scaling, if I ever scale, which I don't know if that's gonna happen or not, but if I ever do scale, I already get my plan mapped out. I'm gonna let my mom, my mom is gonna run this whole self show. Me and my business partner are gonna own it. My mom has managed people for many, 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 many moons. She knows what to look for. She knows the right people to look for. She knows the people that's gonna get the job done. She knows it's this whole thing. I'm gonna y'all look up this. Let me say, I'm gonna give y'all some gems. Now, listen to what I'm saying. Write this down. Look up, it's called colors. It's a thing called colors. I ain't talking about Gucci, blue and white. Not Gucci, blue and white charger and all that. It's called colors. It is like a program that helps you judge people on what color they are. And to have a, a great team, you have to have certain colors in your team. So you need to have, they have colors like blue, gold, yellow, green, different colors like that. So my mom is a professional. She, she actually is certified to do classes like that. So she knows what to look for with the people that she's going to need to make the right team. So this is what I would do. I'm retire her from her job. Boom, she ain't doing that no more. Now we as full, we I'm talking about we getting busy. We got so much going on. We need her. Ma, I need you to set this whole thing up. I need you to hire the right people. She gonna hire the right person that's gonna go on to her. Cause my ultimate goal is to retire her. So she gonna get everything right. She gonna get the right person. She gonna hire the right person. Her and them gonna work together. She gonna train them. She gonna show them everything they need to do. She gonna say them more. They gonna hire more people. And that's how that's that's the way I would do it. That's the only way I would do it. That's the only person I really trust to do it exactly how it needs to be done. Because she ain't gonna skip no steps. She's gonna do it exactly how it needs to be done. That's why, hey, I already got the team. And not to mention, I got it. Look, I got a little secret too. My business partner was managing people for a long time too before we got into all this stuff. So 
I got two people that's gonna make sure it happened and it's gonna happen right so we can get our pockets tight. Question number 10 comes from at crossover and they say I want to start a cargo van business and I started watching all your videos. I was wondering do you have a MC and a DOT number as a cargo van owner operator? Me personally I do not have a DOT or MC. You do not have to have a DOT or MC unless you want to uh, create your own authority and all that stuff. If you want to learn stuff about that, my guy, the gig geezer, go subscribe to his YouTube channel. He talks about different stuff like that. He has an authority and an MC and a DOT and all that stuff. Me personally, I do not. I never had it. I don't really know even know much about it. Um, I use a carrier company to get all my loads instead of going and doing it all myself because I don't want to do the factor and you got to go factor. You got to go chase people down for your money. I didn't want to do all that. I don't mind the carrier company get them a little cut off the money and I get what I get. As long as I get what I, I think I deserve, I'm cool with that. I don't want to deal with all the other stuff. Um, it's a lot that goes into that and I don't think a lot of people really talk about that, but it's a lot that go into it that I don't want to deal with. So, huge shout out to you for the question. No, you do not need an MC or a DOT or authority to get a cargo van so you can go out there and get them banned. Question number 11 comes from at I Hall Gigs, and they say, would you ever have your van de designed with your company and logo on it? At this point, absolutely not. It's way too early. It's way too early. The only way I would do that is at full scale, but I still kind of skeptical on, I want to say no. I'm saying absolutely not. You want to know why I'm saying no? Because I, I don't know if she would ever even see a video like this. I met this lady when I was went going to do one of these pickups, right? She's actually a carrier herself. She has seven vans and a box truck. She told me, stay as low key as possible. Don't cause too much attention to yourself. I guess that when you do all that stuff, it causes a lot of attention. And what if something bad happened? What if something bad happened? Now your stuff is just all on. What if you got a driver? You at full scale. You got drivers swerving in out of traffic, and now they on, now they on Yelp and, and Google and give you bad reviews because you got people all doing all this crazy stuff. So. Me personally, as of right now, no, I'm not going to tag my van and put any stuff I want to put on it. And I know that most people think that it's good advertising, but let me ask you this question. I want to ask you and all the people watching this video right now, this question. How many times have you seen a van, box truck, or any of that stuff drive down the street and you reached out to call them for a service? Answer that question for me. How many times have you called 1-800-JUNK removal? How many times have you really called them? And you seen the van and said, I'm going to call them. I don't think it really happened that often. What about you? Oh, no, probably not. That's what I'm saying. Everybody think it's all advertising. It's not what people really may think it is. I noticed that a lot of people get their stuff wrapped. Well, not a lot of people, but some people get their stuff wrapped. I can understand if you have a big, huge company and you want everybody to know uh, your company and all that stuff, and you at full scale and you got all this stuff going on, that makes sense. But if you only got one or two, three vans and all that stuff, I don't think you should do it. That's just my personal opinion. But everybody can do it how they want to do it. Thank you for the question. On to the next one. Question number 12 comes from at DMAC and they say, how do you manage during the slow times when the apps aren't putting out very much? Honestly, the slow times are the slow times. It's nothing you can really do. The only thing I can say that you can do is get a dedicated route. If you get a dedicated route, you're going to make the same money every day, Monday through Friday, whatever Saturdays or Sundays you work. You're going to make the same money every single time while you're out there on the ground. As far as gig app goes, it's just inconsistent. You're not always going to hit every time, every time, every time. Now, let me say this. There is some places and some people that, that hit every day. On, they go somewhere every day. Monday through Friday, yeah, somewhere getting busy. For some reason, someone don't send me the orders no more. So I don't know what to do about that. It is what it is. So some people, has they have it set to exactly how they're supposed to do it. I'm going to go here at this time. I'm going to do this at this time. Boom. By the time I get this, no, 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 no. They got it set. They're going to get that someone order every single day, Monday through Friday. So if you can catch you a look like that, then that that work out good for you. But um, other than that, everything else is inconsistent. Um, also, it really depends on your area. Because some areas have some of them, some of them don't. And some of them might have other stuff that's booming out there. So I really don't know. I do recommend that if you're going to be doing uh, the gig gaps to get, again, like I said earlier, get as many gig gaps as possible. Because this one might be off one day, and this one might be on the other day. So just get as many as you can, and just do it that way. That's what I recommend. When it's slow, sometimes I just don't get no dough. It is what it is. Sometimes you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, and know when to run. And sometimes you just ain't going to make no fun. Question number 13 comes from at Bob the Builder. And he says, pretty much he doesn't have a van exactly yet. He's in the research phase right now. 
Um, he's having a hard time with some applications because they want you to put in your vehicle information and since he doesn't have the van yet, he doesn't have van information to put in. He is trying to make connections with places, but it's been very difficult. And he's asking, do you know a better way for him to make connections? I'm going to tell you the honest truth. I don't know a better way about making connections because I ain't got no connections myself. I'm going to tell you the straight up truth. Everybody, you can go over here. Look, I'm going to tell you this. This is what I'm going to tell you. This is what I would do if I was you. First off, sign up with all of the apps with your car. Don't You don't have to wait for no van. Sign up with the car. I've been telling this for a long time. I mean, you may be new to the channel, so I'm going to tell you this. Sign up with all the apps with your car. Every single app that I got. I have a video with 30 apps on there. Sign up with all the apps in your car, and then once you get the van, you're just going to switch it over. You don't want to wait and procrastinate and try to get the van first and then sign up for the apps because guess what? They're going to put you on a wait list. They might have a wait list for four months. But you don't know that because you never signed up because you was waiting on the van. So sign up for everything in your car. And then when you get everything situated with the van, you switch over to there. As far as connections go, everybody make it seem so easy. Like you're just going to run up on this direct shipper and this. No, that's not how it really works. I don't care what nobody say. I ain't trying to hear you. Now, there may be a, a, a person or two who did come along and run up to a, a, a direct shipper and they was able to get busy like that. But that's norm, normally how, not how it happened. That's normally how not how it happens. Um, you got it's really building relationships. It, and also, I do want to say this another thing. The best advice I can give you is if you're going to try to get the connections to target smaller companies, do not try to go to Walmart and Lowe's and that ain't how it's going to work. The smaller companies now say you did an order on something else and you task wrap. You had a test. Shout out to my guy uh, Pack Gig Tamin. That's how he got his direct shipper. He said on his video. He went to pick up some blackboards for a person on the Task Rabbit, uh, the Task Rabbit app. He ran there. He went to go pick the stuff up, and the people asked him, "You got the van? Do you do deliveries?" And that's how he got his direct shipper. So, use Task Rabbit and stuff like that, and then try to get your uh, customers that way. Other than that, I really don't know because I don't know myself. I don't even have a direct shipper myself. So, I do have you know regular customers that we do stuff for, like move over here, stuff here and there, but it's not very consistent so that's my recommendation for you i hope that can help you hey you're gonna go you hey very soon you're gonna have your van and you're gonna go out there and get them van oh yeah my business partner had some great advice for you see i didn't think about this that's all you gotta have a biz a partner a team together each achieve more now she said that a great way you can find some people is by going on indeed that's how i found carry companies and everything but you can do it another way you can reach out to some companies and see if they have anything that they need like shipped directly from them to somebody else. Maybe they got another store. Maybe they got somebody else that needs something moved over there, moved over there. So kind of reach out to different people and see if you can find some that way off, off Indeed. I think that a lot of people be sleeping on Indeed. Indeed got some gems in there. All you have to do is keep on searching. That's what I recommend. Go out there and get them dividends. And last but not least, our last two questions comes from at Quans TV. And he says, how was your Infinity SUV on gas when you did gig apps? Not the greatest. I'm just going to be honest with you. Not the greatest. And I found this out. Somebody put me on, so I'm going to put you on right now. I At my old job, is one of the dudes, his name, my, one of, one of, his name was Vato. I called him Vatos. Vatos! My guy Vatos. His name was Memo. But he was used to work on cars and stuff like that. And he told me something, and I actually found out that what he said was true. My business partner, before she had the Infinity, she had a Yukon, a Yukon Denali. No, Yukon, no, not Denali, right? She had the Yukon, right? GMC Yukon. That, that has a V8 engine in there, V8. The Infinity has a V6. The Infinity and the V and, and the Yukon, the, the gas was low-key better in the Yukon. The, the gas was low-key better in the V8 versus the V6. So... The gas wasn't the greatest. I'm going to tell you that. And you got to put premium in that joint too. Don't, don't forget about that. So if you don't have Infinity, if you have another SUV, make a RAV4. Like some SUVs have four-cylinder engines in there. Not all of them have the V6s. So if you get your four-cylinder uh, SUV, I think that's a perfect thing to use. Or you can get your minivan to go out there and get the vans. The minivan, you're going to be minivan Dan. You get the minivan, you're going to be able to get busy with that. So I would recommend if you're looking to purchase a vehicle or if you already have a vehicle, use the one with the four cylinder versus a uh, six. Uh, and if you have to if you have to pick between uh, the six and the eight, I'm going with the eight. And then he said, um, also, are you still flipping houses? If so, do you plan on dropping that kind of content? 
Um, as of right now, we're not flipping any houses. There's, from what I understand, not very many deals out there as of right now. The interest rates are way too high right now. So me personally, and let's say it has to be a killer of a deal. I'm talking about a, a home run, a home run for me to uh, buy this property and pay that eight percent interest rate. I don't think it's a good time to buy right now. That's my personal opinion. Unless you find an excellent deal and it's going to make money later on. If you get it for an 8% interest rate and then you wait for the rate to go down, refinance and then do it that way, yeah. But as far as finding good deals right now with the interest rate that high, I don't see any right now. So, it's and, 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 and my fault. The content. Do I plan on making some house flipping content? Uh, I don't see it. I don't see it. We, we had a penny of house reviews. We had when we flip houses and all that stuff. Nobody was interested in watching something like that. They were not interested. Maybe I was too boring. Maybe if I did it now, maybe it'd be different. I don't know. So maybe we don't know. We don't know what we're going to do, man. As far as right now, we are just focusing on doing the gig after trying to build the YouTube channel up and make it better. But um, later on, you never know. We might make another channel with that, or we might keep this channel. I don't know. I, I, hey, I do not know the future. Whatever happens, happen. We can get to this money when capping. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you are not subscribed, Make sure you smash the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you're a part of the crew, you already know what to do. Throw them C's up! Throw them C's up in the comment section. I appreciate you guys for tuning in to Van Talk Episode 7, the grand finale. Season 1 is done, baby. We had us some fun. I answered some questions. I hope that I helped some people out there. And I don't know when Season 2 is going to come out. So make sure you stay tuned and stick around. And guess what? All 2024, we ain't playing around. If you hate me, you a clown. I'll see you guys on the next one. We're going, we're going, we're flowing. You already know it. It's ZDK, and I'm on my way.